my pleasure and deep, deep honor to welcome Gina Davis to the stage and to WFN. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, this is, uh, this is exciting. I'm thrilled to be here uh, with all of you. I'm, I'm <clears throat> trying to think of a flash mob thing I might do a little <laughs> later. You never know when I might start doing something. Uh, but I'm thrilled to be here uh, with all of you. I love women. I love the energy of women. And, uh, and thank you for that uh, incredible reception also. It's, uh, it's actually kind of weird for me sometimes when I, uh, when I speak to a group because I figure, you know, you might see me a certain way from, you know, movies that I was in or whatever, but, uh, but to me, you know, I'm always still just the same uh, dorky kid that I, uh, that I always was growing up in a, in a small town. It, I, it's funny, I just was uh, talking about this with the driver in the motorcade on the way over. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you heard at length, I, I have spent uh, most of my adult life advocating uh, for women and girls, partly with all of those uh, organizations, and uh, uh, partly in seeking roles that I thought would be uh, instructive to women or constructive for women. Um, I was in a movie called Earth Girls Are Easy. But uh, it was a long time ago, and uh, I think if we just if we put that title aside, uh, we can move on. Uh, <clears throat> and take me as a very, very serious person. Um, so evidently, I announced that I wanted to be an actor when I was, uh, when I was three years old. My parents tell me this, I don't remember. Um, and I'll digress just one second to explain why I call myself uh, an actor rather than actress, because the, the defin dictionary definition of uh, actor is a person who acts. So it's not that actor means man and actress means woman. It, and so uh, I feel like we don't need a little on the end of the word uh, to make it female. And uh, well, it's good. I think it's going to seem very quaint and old fashioned soon, you know, like. We used to use authoress and poetess and doctoress, and uh, uh, I, I consider myself an actor who used to be a waiter. <laughs> so I can't imagine what it was that I must have seen when I was three years old that, that put me on this course, but uh, it never wavered. That was my, my one goal, and so when it came time to go to college, uh, I majored in acting at BU, because this is a, a good idea, majoring in acting, because, you know, it always works out. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I had no idea. My family, we were so removed from anything or any knowledge about <clears throat> show business um, that when I told my parents, you know, I want to major in acting, they were like, oh, you know, fine. As if I'd said dentistry or, or engineering or, or a job that you get, you know, a career that you could actually get a job in. Um, <clears throat> but um, uh, it turned out that my very first acting job was in Tootsie. And, uh, and I mean, what are, what are the odds that your first job is going to be with Dustin Hoffman? I mean, it was a small part, but Dustin Hoffman and Sidney Pollock's the producer, and it was kind of amazing. And I overheard um, a neighbor talking to my mom about it and saying, oh my God, I can't believe it. It's so amazing. My mom said, well, she studied acting. <laughs> But, uh, but whatever the odds were, I, I didn't care. I had this sort of unshakable faith that I was going to, uh, to succeed and be an actor. So here's a, an illustrative little story about that. The, the very first class at BU was a kind of orientation in a room like this. And uh, uh, there's about 100 incoming freshmen. And at one point, the professor says, well, I must tell you, you've chosen an incredibly difficult profession. In fact, probably only about 1% of you will ever be able to earn their living as an actor. And, uh, and I thought, oh, these poor kids. <laughs> oh my god. 
God. Uh, so actually, I should amend what I said a second ago. Either I had you know, unshakable faith in myself that I would succeed, or I was just too dense to understand uh, simple percentages. But uh, <clears throat> I thought today that I could maybe share some stories with you uh, of experiences that led me down the path uh, to advocating for women and girls' empowerment. Um, and uh, one thing that happened to me was being cast in a league of their own. And uh, I had to play, my character was the best baseball player anybody had ever seen. Every time I got near a ball, people were supposed to fall down. And, uh, and the thing was that I had not only never played baseball, but never played any sport. Um, I was, uh, you know, everybody had something in high school <clears throat> that's their thing, and mine was being um, tall. I, uh, um, I was a tall baby. Um, my, my graduation pictures for kindergarten and high school are like exactly the same like this. Um, and uh, so I was very physically uncoordinated, uh, I thought, you know, and, and uh, not good at sports. And they begged me to be on the girls' basketball team. I was like, I can't play basketball. And they said, what? Stand there. Uh, looking, looking tall. Um, but, uh, but I trained really hard, you know, I took it very seriously. And, uh, and the coaches started saying, well, you know, you seem to have some untapped uh, athletic ability. This is great. And I, I bet a lot of you played sports when you were in school, right? Well, right. So you know, it makes sense, you know, you know the, uh, the powerful uh, benefit that you can get from, from playing sports. So um, after that, it happened that I had to learn several other sports for movies that I was in, uh, Taekwondo and fencing and horseback riding and uh, pistol shooting and ice skating and things like that. And, uh, and it was no wonder to me that I was attracted to parts with a physical component because this was like uh, a rebirth for me. Um, I, it turned out that I was coordinated. It just took till I was 36 to figure it out. Um, so what I learned from sports, about the benefits of sports, led me uh, to get involved with the Women's Sports Foundation, uh, which I'm sure all of you know. And uh, I ended up serving as a trustee for 10 years. And it was because learning to play so affected how I thought about myself and how I felt about myself. I suddenly, for the first time, felt like, oh, it's okay to take up space in the world. It's okay to use your body because it does things. And, uh, and for most of my life before that, I had never truly felt comfortable with myself, that, that I wasn't faking it, that I deserved to be successful until sports dramatically improved my self-image and, and also quieted that sort of relentless voice in your head that says, you know, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. Um, and I wanted to make sure that girls could experience this benefit only like decades earlier than I did. Um, the film that had the most impact on my life was, uh, was Thelma and Louise and really, in effect, it changed the course of my life. Um, it cemented my passion uh, around the issue of empowering women and girls and it has really been the engine of my commitment ever since then. Uh, first, I thought I'd tell you a little story about how I got to be in um, Thelma and Louise. Uh, when I first read the script, I was like, oh my God, I have to be in this movie, but then found out it, would, it was already cast with uh, two women and it had a director. Um, and, uh, but it turned out a few months later that fell through. And oh my God, you know, okay, now can I be up for it? And no, no, they've already hired another director and, and two more women. And this happened a third time. So who are they? But there were three sets of Thelma and Louise before it was Susan and I and three different directors. And um, during all this time, this was a year, my agent called Ridley Scott's office every week. He was, he was the producer at that time. Uh, to say, Gene is still interested, Gene is still interested. And uh, so now Ridley decided he's gonna be the director. And, uh, and he says, well, okay, I'll, I'll meet Gina, you know. Um, fine, and uh, so I go to meet with him and I have now like a year's worth of built up passion about this movie and pages and pages of notes about why I absolutely had to be in this movie playing Louise. And um, <laughs> he 
he's listening. I go on for like 45 minutes. And uh, he finally says, so in other words, you wouldn't play Thelma. And there was just a few seconds of pause. And I said, you know what's, you know what's really interesting? As I've been talking, <laughs> I've been hearing myself. And you know, it's, it's really, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right to me anymore. And I'm really thinking that I should play Thelma instead. <laughs> So then I made up reasons why I had to be Thelma for the next uh, 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> so when I finally got cast in the movie, uh, evidently Ridley said, you know, anybody with that kind of um, tenacity is probably uh, going to do a good job. And, uh, and tenacity, to a sometimes ridiculous degree, has been uh, uh, absolutely an indispensable element in championing women and girls. And I know that all of you share uh, this kind of commitment and passion in spades. What I didn't realize about Thelma and Louise at the time was how it would change my life. Everybody working on the movie, we all knew, well, this is a great script and it's unusual because it has two really well-drawn female parts, but there was nothing else about it that made us think it would strike the nerve that it did. I mean, maybe we thought people won't like the ending, you know, drive off the cliff and, well, now I gave the ending away. Um, <laughs> But, uh, but that was about it. Uh, and before, if somebody recognized me in life, you know, at the supermarket or whatever, they might say something like, oh, hey, uh, I really like uh, Beetlejuice, or oh, I saw the fly, and my bug face. Um, <laughs> but after the movie came out, like immediately after the movie came out, suddenly I had people like grabbing me by the lapels to, to, so I'd stay there and listen to what they thought about the movie and how it affected them and, and impacted them and, and oh my, my friend and I acted out your trip. <laughs> hmm. I see. And, uh, and I don't know if you remember, there were, there were maybe a lot of you are too young to remember, but there were passionate editorials about it everywhere on, on both sides. Um, and a lot of you know, negative reaction as well, like, oh my god, now the women have guns. What are we gonna do? <laughs> but if I ever had needed a, a lesson in the power of media images, I certainly had it now. Uh, it, it brought home to me in a very, very powerful way how few opportunities we give women to feel like that about the female characters in a movie to come out of a movie feeling in excited and inspired. You know, and we even kill ourselves. And, uh, and still people are like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pumped. Um, <laughs> so, so ever since then, uh, when, when choosing roles, I just I always keep in mind, what are the women in the audience going to think about my character? And not, not that I want to play role models, mind you. Because, and, I mean, if you think about it, Thelma and Louise, we like, kill a guy, drive drunk, uh, hold up a liquor store, have sex with strangers, uh, and then kill ourselves. So <laughs> as far as that whole we acted out your trip um, <laughs> thing, I'm still, I'm still wondering about that. Um, now, here's the thing. I only have the luxury of being choosy about what parts I want to play because, frankly, I haven't run out of money yet. You see? The, you know, great parts for women, uh, especially older women, are so few and far between that, that you cannot have the luxury of being as picky as all that unless, uh, unless uh, you could afford it. So um, if you happen to read at some point that I've signed on to play uh, Sean Connery's kidnapped wife uh, in a movie, I think that's about the right age uh, difference. <laughs> Uh, you'll know I'm broke. <laughs>